All right, in this video, we're going to talk about lactate threshold. If you watched a previous video about anaerobic training, we mentioned lactate threshold and anaerobic threshold. And in this video, I just want to kind of give you an explanation of what lactate, lactate threshold is and how you would get an indication of when it's reached. So normally you're going to use a blood test to determine lactate threshold. And this can give us an indication of when the anaerobic system is kicking in to help supply energy needs. And it also can be used to measure a, an endurance athlete's um, level of performance. So how much endurance are, are they going to have? Well, the higher their lactate threshold is, Typically, the better they're going to perform because they can deal with lactic acid as it builds up. So very few events are purely aerobic, especially when we're talking about training. So there's normally some sort of anaerobic component. So uh, unless you're running at a, a steady state, then yes, or walking, that might be purely aerobic. But anytime you play most sporting events, um, you're going to have some sort of anaerobic component to it. So for most sporting events, this is extremely important. Let's say we're a cyclist, yeah, there's a large aerobic component to it. But let's say we're sprinting to the finish, well, we're going to have to be able to buffer lactic acid so it doesn't build up and cause us to fatigue. So a lot of um, events have a big anaerobic component, so it's important for us to know our lactate threshold. Because again, most elite level athletes um, are going to have a higher lactate threshold if they're playing most endurance events. So um, this is the point at which, and I'll write this out for you, point at which lactate starts to accumulate, so starts to build up. in the blood. And this really um, has a lot to do with somebody's ability to buffer lactic acid. So some individuals store more sodium bicarbonate in their blood. So we've got sodium carbonate. They store this in the blood and that can help buffer lactic acid and prevent the lactic acid from getting too high to cause um, the individual to fatigue. So sodium bicarbonate is just baking soda. So it's the same thing but your body produces it. Well, let's see how this is how this works out in the body. So I'm going to draw out a little graph down here at the bottom to help make sense of this. And down here at the bottom I always like to talk about heart rate. So going in this direction, we're dealing with heart rate. And in this direction, we're dealing with blood lactate. So blood lactate so as it starts to build up. You're normally going to see this measured out in millimoles per liter. So let's put a 2 here, a 4 here. We'll just go in increments of to 8, 10, 12, which would be extremely high. And you're normally going to see, um, most literature is going to say anything above 4, so in between 2 and 4, lactate starting to build up. And normally after that point, it increases quite a bit. So once you get past 2 or 4, the body can't buffer um, the lactic acid, and it, it starts to build up. So this is, let me just draw this out. So 120, let's say we're right around here, 150, go to 180, and 200 here. So that being pretty close to most individuals' max heart rate. So 220 minus your age will give you an estimate of your max heart rate. That'll be a separate video, so I won't go into that. Let's say right now our lactate level is staying pretty steady right here as our heart rate starts to increase. 
once we start getting past about 80% of our estimated max heart rate, it starts to go up. So it starts to increase. And then this point at which, let's say this is even with four, that's what we call the onset of blood lactate accumulation. Make sure I spelled that right. Onset of blood lactate accumulation. You're going to see it. OBLA. There we go. Just put that in parentheses. Anything past this point, you're going to start to fatigue. You, you won't be able to maintain this intensity very long. You're going to have to drop back down. Your heart rate's going to have to drop back down and recover. Um, typically, and I used heart rate down here because it's just something I use every day in class. This is expressed um, at a percentage of somebody's VO2 max. So let me scribble these out real quick. I just used heart rate because it's something common most people can use. But typically it's going to be measured out. Um, the person's lactate left threshold is going to be a percentage of their VO2 max. So for the average person, it's around um, 50 to 60 percent of their VO2 max. And if you don't know what VO2 max is, it's the um, volume of oxygen that you can get out to the tissues per minute. So it's normally expressed in uh, milliliters per kilogram um, of body weight per minute. So the average person's VO2 max would be 35 mLs of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute. So somebody with an elite level, um, let's say they're at 88 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute um, would of course be getting a lot more oxygen out to the tissue but I'm going to make a separate video about that and again link it back here to um, blood lactate accumulation so um, for an elite level person somebody is training quite a bit you normally see that they can maintain 70 to 80 percent of their VO2 max before the onset of blood lactate accumulation occurs. So this is like an elite level, somebody that does a lot of endurance training. And so that's normally how that this is expressed. I used heart rate for an example, but I could have done percentages of VO2 max. And, and that's normally how we record it. Now the reason this is important, let's say we have two athletes and both of them have 88 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute for their VO2 max. So let me write that out here. VO2 max. So the maximum amount of oxygen they can get out to the tissue per minute so, or the volume of oxygen. So they both have the same VO2 max. So here's person one, here's person two. But this person can train at a higher percentage of their VO2 max than this individual. So what we would see here is this person's lactic tape threshold is higher. So they have a higher lactate threshold than this individual. So most likely they are going to perform better in an event. The only problem with trying to find out your lactate threshold is you're going to have to do some sort of blood test. So it's more invasive. So you got to do a quick blood test. You may have seen elite level athletes where they come and prick their finger real quick and kind of measure their their lactate level well that's what they're trying to determine is lactic acid accumulating they're trying to find out how hard this person can train and they may compare it to vo2 max but an easy way to measure it is to find out what heart rate they were at right when you measure it 
and that can give you an indication. So that can also be used as a tool. That's the reason I like heart rate so much. And that's the reason I used heart rate in, the, in an example. It's much harder to find out somebody's true VO2 max and determine what percentage they're at because normally you're going to have to hook them up to a metabolic cart to get a fairly close reading for VO2 max or other ways of finding out VO2 max but the best way is, is to hook them up to some sort of metabolic cart. So that's the reason I like to use heart rate as, as an example because if somebody's training and let's say they stay on the treadmill we're just trying to find out at what heart rate their onset of blood lactate accumulation happens I can do a quick blood test, prick the finger, do a quick blood test on lactate level and find out where they're at and then correlate that with their heart rate so I can start to track over time their heart rate and where the onset of blood lactate accumulation occurs because if I start seeing let's say they have a heart rate of 180 and I start measuring four millimoles of blood lactate per liter at that moment then I know then that's their OBLA their onset of blood lactate and they're probably not going to last very much longer above that heart rate so that gives me an indication of their lactate threshold so I hope this kind of opened your eyes to lactate threshold and what it is. It is different than anaerobic threshold, um, but the idea is the same. We're just trying to figure out when, when the anaerobic system is kicking in to help supply some of the energy needs. And typically that happens because O2 drops. So we're not taking enough oxygen to maintain purely aerobic energy production and so the anaerobic system has to kick in through glycolysis and anytime glycolysis kicks in to generate energy lactic acid is going to build up and if that happens the muscles are going to fatigue and the person's going to have to stop working out so the next video is going to be about anaerobic threshold it's going to link Lactic threshold, they are different. Um, the ways of measuring them are different, but the end result is just to figure out when does the anaerobic system kick in to help out. So I hope this was useful, and I'll see you in the next.